What SD card should you use for black box? You might think that you just pick a class 10 card and that should surely be fast enough. It can record, you know, 1080p video. Surely it can record your little black box 250 kilobaud, right? Stream, right? Should be no problem. But it's not that simple. I want to refer you guys to this blog post. This post is from 2014, actually January 2014. So the actual SD cards that this guy tests might be dated, might not be on the market anymore, who knows. But the gist of the data is still very accurate. And what this guy demonstrates is that there is a big difference in SD card performance between sequential writes and medium and small random writes. So SD cards are optimized for writing big chunks of data very fast. When a 1080p digital camera is streaming video to the card, it's going to be just shoving a fire hose of data into that card as fast as it can. And it's going to be writing that data sequentially to the card. The, the SD card is divided up into blocks or sectors or whatever they're called. And, and if you know that you're going to write those sectors sequentially, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you can write to them faster than if you're going to write to them randomly. One of the things that's true about all flash memory is that you have to erase it before you write it. And erasing it is very, very slow. So and if you can erase big blocks of it, you can write to it faster. Now we're getting into technical details that I'm actually not knowledgeable enough to talk to you about. So I'm going to shut up before I say something uh, incorrect and get slapped. Uh, uh, hopefully I haven't already done that. If I have, then I accept my slapping. Okay. Uh, the bottom line, though, is that if we look and you can read this, this is actually fascinating stuff, but I'm not going to read it to you. You can just go read it if that interests you. But if we look at the benchmark results, the fascinating thing, let me zoom in here as well. Open image in new tab. There you go. Look at this. If we look at this, you can see that high class 10 or UHS-1 rated cards, they're all very fast at sequential reads and writes, but some of them are pretty bad at random writes. And in fact, some of the cards, this is only a class 4 card, and it's pretty bad at sequential reads and writes. Well, it's not terrible, but it's nowhere near as good as these guys. But look how good it happens to be at 4K random writes for some reason. Why? I don't know. So the, the takeaway message is that if you want a card that is going to perform well for black box, you need a card that is going to be very good at small random writes. And the reason for that is that black box writes a lot of very small chunks of data to the card because it's constantly dumping little bits of data to the card. It, it can't just buffer up, you know, hundreds and hundreds of KB. Uh, the, the whole log for the whole flight might be 3 or 4K, right? So it can't just buffer up 512K and hold on to it and then write it all in one chunk. Number one, there might not be that much memory for black box to use on the chip. So it might just not have enough memory to buffer that long. And the other thing is that if it's buffering that stuff and it hasn't written it to the card yet, and then you crash your copter and the battery comes off, whoop, that data would be lost. So that's not a very good black box if the data is erased when you crash. You need the data when you crash. So it's constantly writing all these tiny, tiny writes to the card. And that is very, very much not what these cards are designed to do. And when you see that it's labeled a class 10, know that that, is, that class is nothing to do with the random write speed. It's the sequential write and the sequential read speed that's being rated when they talk about class 10 or UHS-1. So what, what should you do? Well, you can certainly look at these tests, and if you can find a card here that has very good 512K writes, and it's the write speed, of course, that matters, not the read speed, because you don't care how, how long it takes to pull that little 4K black box log file off the card. That's not going to take any time at all. But the write speed needs to be very fast. And the small block random write speed is what matters the most. Okay, so you can certainly look at a test like this and you could try to find a card that has a good one like this SanDisk Ultra 64 gig. Certainly looks like it has very good 512K write speed and pretty decent speed for everything else while you're at it. Or you can just go to the Clean Flight page. And the good news is that these cards that they list right here are still sold. 
So someday those cards aren't going to be sold anymore and we might actually have to do our own testing. But I just checked and actually I'm confused because I just needed to buy a card for Black Box and I tried to buy one and I actually thought I couldn't find either of these cards on Amazon. But hey, I just checked before I made this video and here they are. Number one, Transcend, 16 gig, class 10, blah, 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 seven bucks. And number two, SanDisk Ultra 16 gig, $10.30. Oh, very nice. So if you want to use Black Box, you should buy one of those two cards because the fact that something is a class 10 or a high high speed card doesn't mean it's going to perform well with black box and you can see here if we go back you can see uh this uh this is a sandisk ultra 32 gig and for some reason the 32 gig version has poor write latency whereas the 16 gig version did very well so don't assume that well if the uh if the 16 gig did well the 32 gig or the 8 gig will do will do better Get the exact card that they tested. It might it might do fine, but who knows? Get the exact card that they tested, though, and you know it will perform well. Okay, there you go. Uh, that's my suggestion. If you're going to buy an SD card for Black Box, uh, that's what I think you should buy. They're not very expensive. They're, they're about 10 bucks. That's not very much money. Uh, pick it up, and uh, you have it in your hands two days later if you have Amazon Prime like I do. If you have a Class 4 or a class 10 card sitting around that you're not using. What the heck? Go you, try it, right? See what kind of black box rate denominator you need to get it working. My rule of thumb is that at about one kilohertz, I can usually sample at one to one, black box rate denom equals one, as long as I have the accelerometer turned off, okay? If I turn the acceler accelerometer on and I'm running at one kilohertz, 1000 loop time, then I get a lot of dropouts. If I am running at one kilohertz and I turn the accelerometer off, I get I still get a few dropouts every now and then, but I found that I still get the same number of dropouts even if I drop the black box rate denom to like two or three. So I think what's happening is that there are occasional very big spikes in the data or occasionally the card gets bogged down and backs up and has to drop data. But that reducing the denom to even two or three doesn't change that. And so I just run at one, uh, denom of one and accept the fact that I'm going to have dropouts every now and then. If you're running at two kilohertz, by the way, then you would need to run at a denom of two to get your, your black box sampling rate back to one kilohertz. So this, this gets actually a little more complicated uh, because in later versions of Betaflight, the PID loop is running at a different rate than the gyro, and black box may not be running necessarily at the same rate as the denom would suggest. But the bottom line is that you can always just play with the denom, and, and if you're getting a ton of breakups in your logs, just increase the black box rate denom. Just take it to one, two, three, four, to the point where eventually uh, it's not breaking up anymore. Since we know that our maximum sampling rate is 8 kilohertz, then you really shouldn't need to go past a black box rate denom of eight, assuming again that you have the accelerometer turned off, or a black box rate denom of nine at, at the very most with the accelerometer turned on. Anyway, hope that's all helpful, and as always, happy flying.